Hi there and welcome back, it's Martha here and I'm back with decks for the spring and um, I always love this, I always love doing kind of seasonal decks but it's going to be a little bit weird this uh, for this season because normally, um, well normally I get a really witchy vibe come August and going into Halloween um, I really feel it in the air and I love that time of year and I think there's lots of us that are like that we really kind of uh, come alive at that that time of year in 2020 um, it was kind of strange because even though I was so looking forward to the autumn and it was fantastic that feeling wasn't as strong and I know this sounds strange but I was kind of a little bit um, not worried but it was just a little bit weird I kind of felt is there something going on for me or something because I always kind of really feel that kind of real witch archetype come alive at that that time of the year but I needn't have worried because I would normally have said that spring is the time where I least feel that way I know it's strange but it is my least favorite season but I am feeling that witchy vibe so strongly and it's the first time ever and all like a lot of my kind of witchy decks have come forward. Um, I'm reading a lot about the Morrigan. I'm reading, uh, rereading Apocaly Apocalyptic Witchcraft by Peter Gray. I just, um, yeah, it's just it, the vibe is there and this. So there's something kind of in the air for me and I, I, I'm going to go with it and I'm going to go with the flow. I want to start first with um, a deck that, oh my God, guys, I am in love with this deck. I don't have the boxes with me now of any of my decks because these decks are all out. This deck is the Darkwood Tarot. It's by Sasha Graham and uh, the art is by Abigail Larson. The book, as you can see, is stunning. It's beautiful. I mean, it's so well put together. And so much thought has gone into it. The artwork is stunning. God, there isn't a thing I can say wrong about this deck. And I adore it. Guys, it's beautiful. Um, there, Those are the backs. And what this is, is this is a witch's journey. Okay? And so, in other words, this is going to be your journey if you resonate with this deck. So... The sides, as you can see, are blackened. I did that. I did that. So you, you, when you, if you get this deck, it's not going to look like that. Um, and I'm just going to jump into the artwork. So as you can see, there's something very kind of old school cartoony about the um, imagery here. And as I said, it is a witch's journey through the, the 78 cards. I love the borders on these because they're um, they're very kind of, you know, they're almost non-existent. But yet at the same time, it kind of gives you a window into the card. I look at the justice card. Isn't that beautiful? There is just something so profound about this deck. And it really has a beautiful voice. It's very, very witchy. I mean, I just feel like I should be going into... I feel like I should be in August now and that I am heading towards Samhain and all that delicious sort of feeling that you have at that time of year. But look at that, isn't that lovely? But for some reason I'm getting that at the start of spring. Like I'm filming this on, I think today is the 16th of March. So tomorrow, tomorrow is um, tomorrow's Paddy Day, Paddy's Day, so happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, but the witch is with me for some reason I don't know why but she's uh, walking with me very strongly at the moment uh, very Red Riding Hood feel to that deck as well I absolutely love this deck I highly recommend it it is very very to the point very honest uh, quick fire really weaves a beautiful story when you're reading with it and it's also fantastic for beginners because it's RWS based. So if you have a foundation at all, guys, you haven't got a problem. Um, it's, it won't be a problem for you. 
um, I showed you already the Witch's Tarot. So um, I'll give you a little brief rundown here. Chris Madsen, the amazing artist Chris Madsen and um, Burning Paper Hearts, the Witch's Tarot, this is just Major Arcana. I do not think that this deck is ever going to go back into its box. Uh, one little word of warning before I show a few of these cards. There is nudity in almost every single card. This is serious. Um, this is serious tarot, guys. This is tarot. You know, when you've worked with tarot for a while, this is tarot saying, uh, come on, let me bring you a little deeper down the rabbit hole. So, again, nudity, guys, in almost every one. This is the magician amazing amazing this is serious witchy um stuff here it is about the path of the witch through the major arcana he has included six other cards and they all have a reason to be in the deck which is just amazing look at that card oh, lord it is so beautiful i cannot recommend this deck enough and reading with it is profound i don't know what else to say it's profound to read with this deck it's it's very ch i find it very chatty i'm not going to show you everyone now because i've i have another video there it's very chatty but it wants to speak about big things you know don't come at me with what should i make for dinner because this deck does not want to know about that um so be warned a beautiful beautiful deck and so bloody magical it's amazing the next deck is an oracle deck and you all know this deck guys and this deck has got a reputation in the tarot community now i've grown up with stories of the ishi and the dini she and the, you know they're everywhere and I speak about them respectfully, always. Um, and this deck, this person tapped into something. I, I don't know what it is, but um, it's not, I wouldn't consider it the an Irish representation of the she. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't always have to be the she are through many different uh, cultures and um but but from what i grew up with i wouldn't consider it very irish sort of um connection to the she but there is something about this deck and the intensity of this deck is ridiculous it is amazing it is of course the fairy oracle by brown brown Froud, and the artwork is by jessica Macbeth. This is the book from this, guys, and the only other book I can say that has come with a tarot deck that is worthy of um, all the praise that it gets is Phantasmagoria uh, from the Tarot of the Vampires, which is just amazing. The book is fantastic. The deck is fantastic. Um, but this particular book as well warrants all the hype. It's amazing. Now this deck will play with you. It will it will definitely play with you. When I first got this deck, I didn't have any I didn't really have any connection with this. It just was I I I would pull a card and it and I was like, what the hell is this thing trying to say to me? Now, normally I would have given that a bit of time and I would have said, okay, this deck does not want to be with me. I'm going to pass it on. But I didn't. I kept this deck. Something told me just you need to you need to keep this deck, and I kept, I kept it. And it, if you kind of call its bluff, it will eventually begin to speak to you. And when it does, it would put the hairs up on the back of your neck. And I kid you not, it is fantastic. It is an oracle deck, so it's not tarot. I know they did bring out another deck called the Heart of Fairy and I would love if they reprinted it. Um, unfortunately, uh, 
it, it isn't in print and what they're asking for it price wise on eBay and stuff like that I wouldn't go there guys hopefully they will they will print it again um, but these are just some of the images this deck uses reversals as you can see and I actually think I'm going to get a second copy of this because the one thing about it is the cardstock is not great and I worry that something is going to happen to it. That's how much I really love this deck. There is there is just something about this deck. And I know other people have spoken about it. And how they ha oh, everybody has their individual little story about this deck. Because, but for me, when it kind of started talking to me, I almost put it away. <laughs> because I was kind of like, oh good God. You know, that is just too weird. Um, but it is amazing. It's trickstery. It is honest. It will lead you down the garden path, but it will always be so spot on. I mean, it is boom, boom, boom. It just is fantastic. And so worth having. And I... I these, this is one of the decks that I absolutely love. This is what I love about oracle cards and tarot cards is that when you start to build a relationship with them, it is, there is, it's just fantastic. It's just amazing. Um, the next deck that I am going to show you does remind me of the Irish She. And again, I say that with the greatest of respect. When I was a child, we had a book that had almost exactly the same artwork in it. And I was always mesmerized by the images. And it was all about Irish folklore and fairy tales and the two of the Dodonan and so on and so forth. And then this deck hit the scene and I love this deck. It's very powerful. And it is dark. It's Tarot of the She. That's the little book that comes with it. I don't have the box with me now. Um, but this deck, I have actually modified this deck. So it's actually quite a big deck when you buy it initially. But I kind of cut the borders off. So you can see it's kind of slightly um, taken off there. But I, I don't mind that. I, I still think it looks, it looks lovely. I can't speak. I blackened the sides as well. Now, this is the imagery that I'm talking about. This is so fae. It, <laughs> it is um, the Hermit card. Oh, Lord. I mean, you can always, almost imagine being led a merry dance up that mountain with the she and maybe dancing for the night and coming home and finding that... 40 years have gone by and your family or friends are no longer uh, with you. Um, it just has a beautiful, the colour saturation is gorgeous. It's Emily Carding actually, by the way, is the um, creator of this deck. The colour satura saturation is absolutely beautiful in it. And I just think it's much nicer without the borders. And I, I was really on the fence about doing it initially because I was just afraid that I was going to damage the deck. And I, um, but I jumped in there, I did it, and it's just gorgeous, as you can see. They've, she has changed the names on the... You know, there isn't like wands, swords, cups. It's dancer, warrior, um, dreamer, and what was, what was the other one? Good Lord. And maker. Okay, so there are the different suits. Um, but it, it works. It works fine on this. There is a little um, phrase at the end as well. Just if you're kind of new to the tarot, like this is the dancer five, so... We're saying the the five of cups, so it's where loss resides. So it gives you a little nudge, but you know it's also easily ignore you you can ignore it if you're kind of well on the way in tarot. I want to show you a particular card in this actually, 
which in my opinion is one of the nicest renditions of the star card that I have ever seen. I'm just going to give you some of my favourites now. Um, just so beautiful and it really it really embodies the star card as far as I am concerned. It's just glorious and it's so fey and so magical. So this is it here. This is the star card and I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's just beautiful. I mean there is such a depth to a depth to the eyes, the expression. It's really gorgeous. Just a few more of my favourite. Like this is Dreamer 6. Oh, just gorgeous. So that's the Six of Swords. I mean it's so perfect. There's the Hanged Man. It's kind of hard to see that actually there. I, I realise that. but And of course this is the Wheel of Fortune. Like look at how fey that is. And it's the use of the colours as well. There's something about them that to me just always, it brings back the image of that book that we never kept, of course, and I should have kept it. And this is the Empress. It's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful deck. And again, it's... I kind of... I don't want to be saying serious tarot, but it's like tarot that... It's a... It's a a tarot deck like the witch's tarot even though I the witch's tarot for me is is very much the kind of peak of tarot decks um but there is something about decks like this that they it is unashamedly tarot it's going to speak to you about things that are dark it's going to speak to you about things that are light it is what you have come to the tarot for um and there are times, I will admit, where I will just pick decks that are kind of very light and have a kind of, um, just a friendlier kind of sense to them or approach to them. And it, it's just because whatever my mood is at that time or whoever I'm reading for, it's it's that's okay, that's fine. But it's so good to have decks that are unashamedly tarot and the tarot system and they want to um, speak about every aspect in all of its messiness and glory and everything in between so perfect I love this deck absolutely adore this deck and I've had it for quite a long time now and it's never failed me the next deck that I am going to show you is another oracle deck and this you know what I I have I have a few oracle decks and the ones I have I absolutely adore and this particular one is by Lucy Cavendish and Jasmine Beckett Griffith Griffith it is the oracle of the shapeshifters this deck I deliberately purchased the Australian version of this deck because the kind of American edition is geared towards um, like a teen the kind of teenage market now that's I've no problem with that whatsoever but I had heard that this the Australian one was kind of more adult in in the in the guidebook so I thought I'm going to go for that um so it's kind of it's going to look kind of a little different and the artwork is a little different as well it's much more Jasmine's artwork is much more modern in the American kind of version it's it's more of her modern artwork so these are the backs very beautiful as you can see that my decks are kind of pretty dark for spring <laughs> I don't know what's happening but I'm I've I've learned to just trust it this deck is it's it's not kind of animal um, spirit guide uh, I I don't feel that it is anyway to be perfectly honest the guidebook is fantastic what I feel this is more like is kind of um, it's kind of calling on aspects of yourself that are available to you at any moment in time. So it's aspects of yourself. If you're in a difficult situation or something like that and you need to find something within yourself to kind of deal with that situation. This to me is what this deck is about. It's about kind of shape shifting into that aspect of yourself. Okay, I hope I'm kind of... Um, 
making sense. I probably have not made sense through any of this video, but so it's really a beautiful deck. Yes, I know some people say that Jasmine's um, artwork is strange. It is. I have a lot. I have Le Vampire Oracle. I have the Alice in Wonderland Oracle, which is amazing, amazing. But it just hasn't shown up for me at the moment. Um, and I have a few of her other decks, excuse me. And to be honest, every one of them is brilliant. But this is the particular deck that showed up for me at this time. So I'm going to leave it there, guys. I'm 20 minutes in already. I hope you enjoyed the videos. And I hope to see you next time. And until next time, have a great St. Patrick's Day, by the way. And even if you're not Irish... I'm sure there's a little bit of it in there somewhere. Um, enjoy yourself and be good. And I'll talk to you soon. Many blessings. Take care.